Good morning, church. How many know we serve such a good God, don't we? How many know we serve such a good God, don't we? He's faithful. He's good. He's with you. I want to say welcome. Welcome to The Way. If this is your first time here, we're so glad you're here with us this morning. Can we give a big wave to everyone right now that's online with us? Hello, everybody online, and shout out to all of our campuses right now. Arrowhead Campus, Pomona Campus, TJ Campus, LA Campus, Kenya Campus, and Safford, Arizona. Let's give a big wave and a shout out to everybody and all the homes watching all over the world. Welcome. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, God, because you're so good to us. You've never let us down. You will never let us down. Father, it's only because of you that we're even standing here today. God, how good you are. Today, Lord, we're, we're ready to hear from you. Our hearts, they're open. Speak to us. Let your spirit move. Clear our thoughts, clear our minds, God. Clear out all distractions, God. We're ready to hear from you, Lord. Speak through me, Father, Lord. It's not even me up here, God. Lord, I give you liberty. Just move and speak. Push me over to the side, God. And Lord, you take the pulpit, Lord. And today we're ready to hear from you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say amen and amen. You may be seated. Give your neighbor a high five. As you're seated, let them know, I'm so excited to see you today. Well, good morning, everybody. Again, welcome to The Way. Uh, my name is Christian, one of the pastors here at the church. Pastor Marco is actually preaching at our Arrow, uh, I'm Arrowhead, Arizona campus right now. So he's out there. So big wave to Pastor Marco if you're probably not watching right now, but maybe you're watching the rebroadcast. Hello, Pastor Marco. Uh, but today we're going to continue the series uh, we've been in, and really what we've been learning is how to walk in the abundant life that God has promised us. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to go ahead and purchase your book, The Eight Principles to Experience the Abundant Life. It's been powerful and life-changing. But today we're going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to experience some breakthrough. Someone say, it's time for breakthrough. You know that God absolutely wants and desires for you to experience the breakthrough of an abundant life. But I'm here to let you know right now, the enemy does not want you to get this message. Satan will do whatever he can in his power to prevent you from receiving the word that God has for you today. Because if the enemy can convince you that God does not want you to walk in abundance, then he's already won the battle. But I got good news for you. God absolutely desires a good, abundant, and a bright future for you. And anybody that says otherwise is not telling you the truth. I'm here to let you know the truth. That God desires a good future for you. Look it, I'll prove it. Let's go to scripture. Look at John 1, 16. It says, from his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. You know what that tells me? That God desires that we're abundantly blessed. Someone say, God desires that I'm abundantly blessed. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. You may know this scripture. God says, for I know the plans I have for you. Their plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. You know what that tells me? That God's will for our life includes goodness and a hopeful future. Someone say, God wants goodness and a hopeful future for me. Look at Psalms 35, 27. It says, and may they, may they say continually, the Lord be exalted who delights in the prosperity of his servant. You know what that tells me? That God wants me to prosper. It's funny. And you can just feel that as soon as I say that, it's almost like there's a wall that comes up. 
And I start to put my guard up to some of those things. It's like I'm almost like I'm resisting that from my life. But the enemy's objective for you, the enemy desires so much that we don't believe anything that God just said right now. The enemy's plan for you is that we doubt every promise and every word that God has for your life. God wants you to prosper. God wants a good and hopeful future for you. God wants you to succeed and be abundantly blessed. And the enemy wants you to think that God is lying to you. And if we're not careful, even as I'm saying this right now, the enemy will have you thinking that God does not want any of this for you. The enemy's tricky. The enemy plays games with us. The enemy tries to get to steal the promises that God has for you. But God has this intended for you. But here's a big question that I'm sure is in a lot of minds. If God wants this for me so much, then why is it that I seem to hardly be walking in that at all? Why is it that I'm not experiencing that abundant life if God wants that for me? Well, here's why. Because it's actually up to you. I'm going to tell you something that's crazy. You, you actually have the, you have the power to decide how much you want God to bless you. I'll say that again, maybe this side. You can decide how much you want God to bless your life. What does that mean? If I decide how much I want God to bless me, I want him to bless me abundantly and fruitfully. And I want to walk in favor. And I want to walk in goodness. And man, I want to walk in all that. Don't we all? Don't we all want to be blessed in this place? Well, if, I, if God left it up to me, and that's what I want, how come I'm not blessed? How come I'm not walking in that abundant life? Well, here's, I could maybe break it down a little bit. Because God has already put the seed in your hand. And what you do with that seed determines the blessing that you walk in. See, your, your future, your abundance, the life that God has intended for you has already been placed in the palm of your hand in the form of a seed. So we're praying, God, where's my breakthrough? Where's my next level? Where's the abundance? Where's the, 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 the breakthrough in my family? Where's the freedom? Where's this thing you're talking about? Everyone keeps talking about living a blessed life. Where is that for me? And God's saying, I've actually already given it to you in the form of a seed. And you're actually holding it right in your hand. Oh, but God, I don't have a lot. I, how could I possibly have abundance in my hand right now? I'm paycheck to paycheck. I'm struggling. My, my life is on disarray. I, I, I'm anxious all the time. I'm fearful. God, how can I have that in my hand? God said, I've already placed the abundance and the fruit and the trees inside of that little seed. God has placed everything you need in your hand already. God has given you the key to unlock the abundant life. You don't need to go searching for it. You don't need to go looking for it. You don't need to go buy it. It's already in your hand. What you decide or what you determine to do with that seed will determine the blessings that you walk in or don't walk in. Look at 2 Corinthians. Let's turn to this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting from verse 6. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide. Someone say decide. decide. Say it again. Say decide. decide. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. The key word in this verse that we need to really look at is you must decide. You have the decision. The ball is in your court. You determine if you want a big harvest or if you want a little harvest. You decide if you want big breakthrough or a little breakthrough. You decide if you want big or little. It's up to you. It's up to me. God has placed the power of that decision in the palm of your hand in the form of a seed. How do I decide whether I want a big breakthrough? Whether I decide to plant it or to withhold it. 
What you do with that seed determines what kind of harvest you'll have in your life. And this is what's crazy about this. Is that God already put it in your hands. The question is, what have you done with the seed that he's already given you? We're praying, we're asking God, God, if you would just give me a, a big break, or Lord, if I could just land that promotion, or if I could just hit the lotto. Man, I'm going to sow, God. Ooh-wee. We're telling God, God, you test me in this. Test me in this, Lord. Give me, let me hit the lotto, and I'll be a giver. See, how many know we know better? I mean, we... we, we <laughs> We know better. I mean, <laughs> God's like, hmm, the seed I've already put in your hand is still in your hand. I mean, you're still holding on to it. And you want to hit the lotto and, 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 then, and then we'll become a giver. Or you want a big break, then we'll become a giver. You know, sometimes God will, will call us. To sow a seed in some of the most inconvenient times. Like, just think about it right now. Right now we're in a season, uh, inflation's going crazy, and, you know, gas prices are, you know, still crazy. And, uh, you know, we're filling up our, our, our cars. And it's just, it's crazy. Let's put it that way. And in this season, it may seem like, you know, things are hectic in your life right now. And then God says, now's the time to sow. Now, God? You see what I'm going through? You see what bills I have? You see what I, you see what's on my plate, Lord? Do you want me to sow now? You know what God sometimes does in those moments? He's testing our heart to see, do you trust me when you're going through the most difficult storm of your life? Or are you going to trust what's in the palm of your, what, what your own finances? Are you going to trust your own job? Are you going to trust your own position? God is saying this, trust me when you're struggling. Trust me when you're in the storm. Trust me when you're in the fight of your life. And watch what I will do in, with the seed that I've already placed in your hand. The disciples were going through a storm. Jesus was in the boat with them. And you know what he was doing? He was taking a nap. Jesus was asleep in the boat, and the disciples thought they were going to die. They woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, you don't care about, do you even care about us? We're going to die. And Jesus is like, guys, oh, ye of little faith, I'm trying to take a nap here. He calms the storm. And in that moment, the disciples learned something. If Jesus is in our boat, we're not going down. This is a message we need to get this morning. I don't know what storm or fight you're facing right now. It could be financially. It could be in your family. You don't know what the next month is going to look like. You don't know how you're going to get through this week or to the end of the year. But if Jesus is in your boat, there's nothing you got to worry about. All you got to do is grab your pillow, grab your blankie, and take a nap right there next to Jesus and say, I'm chilling. I'm cruising. I got this because God is with me. We need some people that nowadays can trust God while they're in the middle of their biggest fight and their biggest storm. Now's not a time to pull back. Now's a time to invest, to sow seed, and to trust God with everything that you have. You know why this is so, so important? Because what you do with your seed is actually has observers. Both God and Satan are watching to see what you're going to do with the seed. You, you remember the story of Cain and Abel, right? Cain and Abel, they bring an offering to God. Abel brings his best. Cain brings his least. He brings the leftovers to God. And God rejects the offering. Why? Because Cain didn't mean it. Cain didn't bring anything of value. All that said in that moment was that God doesn't have Cain's heart, and Cain wasn't giving with his heart. So God says, oh God, I rejected it. So Cain got all mad. He's like, nah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I think that's how he reacted. I don't know. He got mad, and God says, be careful. He says, watch out, because sin is crouching at the door, seeking 
like a lion seeking who he may devour. You know that Satan is actually waiting and observing and crouching and waiting to see what you're going to do with the seed. Are you willing to give God your very best or are you going to, are we like Cain where we give God our leftovers? We give him our leftover time. We give him our leftover energy. We give him our leftover offerings. We give him our leftover attention and we complain and we wonder why we're not walking in the blessings that we see everyone around us walking in. And we're mad at God and we're mad at the church and we're mad at the world and we're mad at our boss and we're mad at the economy and we're mad at the government and we're blaming everybody else and God is saying none of that stuff matters as long as you do what I say you will reap my blessing but both God check this out both God and Satan are watching to see what you do with your offering why here's why because the scripture says in Matthew it says it in Matthew 6 21 for where your treasure is there your heart will be also. Here's, here's what I'm trying to say. What you do with your seed is, is a statement of where your heart and your affection is. So God and bo both God is observing and Satan is observing to see what you do. Because, because wherever your heart is, that's who's your master. And I'll even go on to say this. This is scary. Wherever your heart is, is who you're actually worshiping. Who are we worshiping? Who are we showing affection to? Who are we loving? And it, let, me, let me let you know this. There is no middle ground. There is no halfway in between. There is no neutral. You can't just opt out of this equation. You're either showing your affection to the Lord or you're showing your affection to the enemy. You're either tithing to God or you're tithing to Satan. You're either giving your heart to God or you're giving your heart to the enemy. You know the Bible says... Submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. When I'm sowing my life, my offering, my time, my attention, my heart into the hands of God, I resist with the enemy, the curse, the lie, the pains that the enemy tries to put in my life. But on the flip side is true. When I sow to the world, when I sow just into myself, when I do not sow to the kingdom, I'm submitted to the devil and resisting God. You know that we can actually submit to the devil and resist the blessings of God off of our life. How do we do that? Well, we're afraid to sow our seed. I want to bring out the, uh, the seed really quick. I'll show you guys a little example. I was in, I was in kindergarten. I was five years old. I was a, thank you, Brene. I was, a, I was in kindergarten, five years old, when I learned this principle. My teacher at this time, uh, she gives us an assignment, and she teaches us how to grow a tree. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that's how trees came about. So she says, all you have to do is get some dirt. You come over here. Get some dirt, put it in a little cup. Okay, I could do that. That's easy. Get a seed. I got some sunflower seeds up here. It's all the seed I could find. <laughs> About to eat some of these. Get a seed. Put it in the dirt. Bury it in there. And then throw some water on it. And you'll get a tree. Easy. So easy. A five-year-old could do it. A five-year-old could figure this principle out. So what do I do? I go home, I grab a seed, I grab a cup, put some dirt in it, throw the seed in the dirt, and I water it. I did it. I'm practicing a godly principle that God has set up for me in order for me to receive the fruit and the abundance that God has for me. Within this seed right here contains your future. 
within this tiny seed right here contains the abundance. It contains breakthrough in your family's life. It contains the wisdom you need to be a leader, to run your business, to lead your organization. It contains everything you need within that seed for miracles and breakthrough. You don't know how you're going to get through it, but in that seed are the miracles and the provision and the life. Everything you need is in that seed. It's so easy a five-year-old can do it. If a five-year-old can figure that out, then I think all of us can. But little five-year-old Christian wasn't perfect. There was a little instruction I think she left out. So this is what I do. Again, I explained it. Get the seed, put it in the dirt, water it. She said that you needed sun. So I go to my backyard. I put it in the backyard to sit it down on the floor there with some sunlight. Then I sit down, cross my legs, and I'm staring at this cup. And I'm looking at this thing, and I'm wondering, how long does this take? <laughs> and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm trying to figure this out. And then I start to think, she lied to me. This lady lied to me. She told me if I put it in there, and I water it, and I give it sun, then a tree's going to grow. You see a tree? I don't see nothing. So I start to doubt. I start doubting this thing. I get impatient with this thing. I start to, man, God forbid, I start to curse this thing. You know how crazy it is? That we have a seed in the ground, a promise from God. A promise from the creator of the universe sitting right now in the ground and we start to curse that seed lord help us what god is saying is this you can trust my promises i'm not gonna back down on what i've already told you i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you I'm not going to tell you one thing and then flip it and do something else. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. My promises, my word will not return to me void. It will always accomplish what I've set for it to do. What God is saying is you don't have to curse your seed. You don't have to doubt it. You don't have to bicker. You don't have to complain that, you know, uh, so-and-so is getting blessed over here and such-and-such -such is getting blessed over there and you haven't got nothing. Don't get offended. Don't get patient your harvest is coming the bible says don't grow weary in doing good because at the right time you'll reap a harvest of blessing if you do not give up i hope i got some people in here that are willing to stick it out and that well, i don't got no quitters in this room i know it i know there's people in here that are willing to push through a fight to get through a storm to get through difficult seasons and not give up or forsake your seed you have a seed in the ground water it speak life over it confess the promises god will show up and do what he said he's gonna do in your life in your family in your mind in your finances in your business he gave you a promise he gave you a vision he's gonna see you through all the way to the end do you believe that church he's gonna see you through it's breakthrough time it's time for a breakthrough it's time for us to break out of this generational curse of poverty that's been over our family for way too long it's time for us to break out of the cycle that we've been in, where we're living just to get by, where we're trying to cheat systems just to make it. God's saying, you don't got to do all that. Just trust me. I got you, son. I got you, daughter. I'm going to take care of you. I'm a good father. I love blessing my children. I love giving good gifts to you. I take delight when you prosper as my servant. I want you to succeed. When we do it God's way, there's no other way to do it. It's breakthrough time. It's time to break through. It's time to advance. It's time to develop. It's time to move forward. It's time for things to change and shift. And I could feel it. I could sense it already. God is shifting something in the atmosphere in Jesus' name. How many believe that today? 
He's shifting something. And that's what we need to confess. Man, I feel that. I feel that so strong right now. We just need to, we need to start to confess that God is beginning to, God desires for a shift to happen in your family. God desires for a shift to happen in your, in your finances, in your business, in your lifestyle. God desires something to break off of you and for something new to be released in Jesus' name. Can't you see? Can't you sense it? Something new is happening in this church, in this city, in your family and in your home it's happening in Jesus name breakthroughs taking place right now the first thing that are breaking off are these old mentalities it's time God left the seed in your hand what are you going to do with it he left you in charge with that seed you determine what's going to happen some examples in the Bible that I could think of some examples of breakthrough. One I remember is in the book of 1 Kings. It's a breakthrough I see of miracles taking place. You know, uh, uh, God instructs Elijah to head to a village because there was no rainfall anywhere. I'm looking at 1 Kings chapter 17, if you want to jot that down. There's no rainfall anywhere in the land. Brook dried up, no rainfall. So he sends him to a village. You know what's interesting? When I read that, I, I immediately thought, I immediately thought of, of where we're at today. You may feel like there's no rainfall in your life or in your season. I understand, like we I don't understand the gas prices. Or I understand inflation's happening. I understand all these things. But I'm, I got good news for you. You tap into the breakthrough no matter if there's rainfall or not. Why is that? Because God's blessing is not determined by the economy. God's blessing is not determined by the weather. God's blessing is not determined by the government. God's blessing is not determined by the stock market, by your 401k. His blessing and his abundance are far above all of that. And what we do in the physical manifests something in the spiritual. When I sow a seed in the ground, I get God's economy over my life. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not subject to what the world's economy says or does it's subject to his word and his promises alone God answers to no man God answers to no government he is a king of kings we don't vote him in and vote him out he rules now and forever he is supreme and sovereign he has all eternal riches in heaven you think that he's nervous or worried about the economy you think that God is afraid about what tomorrow's gonna hold you think that God's nervous about what the stock market's gonna do if he's not nervous I'm not nervous if if he's taking a nap in the boat, I'm taking a nap in the boat. If he's cruising along, so am I. I'm trusting my king. I'm trusting my provider to provide for me. My father is a good father. I'm his child. I know he loves me. He's not going to push me away. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. How many believe that today? I'm fired up about this. I'm fired up about this. I believe this. I stand on this. I, I, I know God is true. I know, he, I know he means what he says he means. When, when I was a kid, I remember I was now 10 years old. And I got $10. That's a big deal when you're 10. <laughs> That's 10 bags of hot Cheetos, you feel me? You know what I'm talking about. I mean, you could, that's a lifetime supply of hot Cheetos. <laughs> you walk around with $10, you're just like, hey, you want some? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you're balling. So I'm walking around with $10. I actually found it on the floor at school. I probably should have turned it in, but um, that's a, God was working on me. Remember, little Christian wasn't perfect, okay? I, I got this $10. That night we had church. And that night, we're doing a special offering as a church. And I'm like, don't no one know that I got $10. I didn't tell nobody. I'm waiting for after church. There's a little convenience store right next to our church. That's where we go. I'm getting my hot Cheetos. But I, I, I've always been taught to give. And I thank God for that. I, th I thank God that I was taught to be a giver. 
I'm not saying that to boast. I'm not saying that to boast to myself. I thank God that someone recognized the principle and showed me as a little kid. They would get change out of their, my aunt would do this. My Aunt Janet, you know Janet Casa, she's my aunt. She would get change out of her purse. I'm talking pennies and dimes and just put change in all of our hands to make sure we had something to give every time that basket came by. I knew, I knew, like, this is mine and I'm giving. This is mine and I'm giving. And in that moment, when they were calling for an offering, it, that, that tug began to happen in my spirit. Little 10-year-old. And I felt the pull. And I knew in that moment that it was time to give. It was a whole $10 bill, which back in that, that day, that's like, a, that's like a whole, you know, rack. <laughs> but it was a $10 bill. And I go up. It's one of those offerings where you bring it to the front. And I remember bringing it to the front. And I felt like it was so right. What I was doing in that moment was right. I don't know how else to explain it. But as a 10-year-old, I recognize that what I'm doing right now is the correct thing to do. It's what I'm supposed to do. And God was teaching me as a 10-year-old to be a giver. To give. God, don't, God didn't need $10, Okay. God doesn't need my hot Cheeto money. God doesn't need your hot Cheeto money. Okay, because to God, what, what we have, it may, it may be like hot Cheeto money to him. It's, it's, it may seem like a lot to us, but in the moment, what God wanted and needed was my heart. God needed my faith. God needed my trust in him. In that moment, 10-year-old Christian learned to trust God with everything. I didn't put my faith in money. I put my faith in God. This happened over and over. Later on, I had a birthday. Then I got more money than that. It was like $50. And in that moment, I knew there was another offering coming up, and I felt the tug again. I felt the spirit leading me to do this, and I knew this is right. This is what I must do. I need to do this. And I gave all that $50 with faith. And it may not seem like a lot to a little 12, 13-year-old, but in that moment, it was everything that I had, and it was, it was, but I wasn't giving money. I was giving my heart to God. I was trusting him in that moment, and I was learning to do it, and in the same way, those things are like baby steps. I was learning, and in the same way, we learn to trust God when we take what seed we have in our hand. It may not seem like a lot to anyone else around you, but to you, it's everything. It's all you have. It's your faith. It's your trust. It's your time. It's your heart. It's your finances. It's everything you own. It's there, and you're learning to trust God with everything, and, and God is going to tug on your heart, and he's going to say, son, daughter, you can trust me with all you have. If you would just let go of your grip and release it to me, and I will bless you. Learn to trust me as your provider. Learn to trust me as your giver. Learn to trust me as your father. I will take care of you. Years pass and years pass, and I've now been able to give more than I ever thought I'd be able to give. And I'm, I'm, I can say that God has blessed me so much, I've never had to worry about my needs being met. God has been so good. And he continues to be a blessing. I believe that that $10 bill and that $50 for my birthday were seed in the ground that I'm still bearing fruit from today. I'm still bearing the fruit from that today. And part of that fruit is the testimony of how good and faithful God is. That you can walk in that promise and abundance now. I wonder how many of you guys have a, are bearing fruit right now are just going to start bearing fruit from a seed that was planted 5, 10, 15 years ago in your life. And you're just now bearing the fruit. And you're just now reaping the harvest of it. But how much seed is in the ground today? Some of us have seed again in our hand but we are holding it like a death grip we got a death grip over our f future <coughs> we got a death grip over breakthrough for our family we got a death grip it's like god already provided everything you need it's in your hand there's nothing else you need it's there if we would just learn to trust him, that's all he wants. He wants you to trust him with your everything. Trust him with your life. Trust him with your seed. It's time for a breakthrough, church. It's time to break out of this. God is not your enemy. I just, I feel like I need to say that to someone. God is not your enemy. He's your father. He's your provider. He's your savior. He's everything you need. 
and he will continue to be everything you need. I want to share one more scripture with you. This is the story of a woman. She's an immoral woman, the Bible says. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. One of the Pharisees, they asked Jesus to have dinner, so he goes to the house. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard that he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. An immoral woman, someone who's sinful, someone who doesn't have it all together, someone who's messed up a lot, someone who hasn't got it right all the time, an immoral woman. Verse 38, then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell at his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. And then the Pharisees that invited him, they, they, they saw this. He, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. That's what they were saying about her. They're probably right. She probably was a sinner. That's probably true about all of us. We're probably not perfect. But look what Jesus says. He says, Simon said to the Pharisees, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. He said, a man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one, 50 pieces of silver to the other. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? So he thinks and he goes, well, I lost my spot. Verse 43, Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust off of my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss. But from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head. But she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. Listen to this. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Although this woman was immoral, was full of sin, although she didn't get things right, she recognized something about Jesus. That he was a savior. That, she was, that Jesus was exactly what she needed in that moment. A savior, s someone that would, would come and teach and ultimately die for her. And she recognized this. And she was giving this alabaster jar. She was giving and she was showing her gratitude because of, uh, she was giving because she was so grateful. You know that giving is a reflex of gratitude. I'll say that again, giving is a reflex of gratitude. Giving is a response of how grateful we are. Giving isn't a way to try and earn God's love. It's a response because he's loved us so much. This woman recognized something. That she, she was giving everything she had because Jesus gave everything to her. And today we must recognize we give everything we have to the Lord because he's given everything he has to us. Jesus was perfect and sinless and yet was willing to die on our behalf. People who were immoral and sinful. He, Jesus gave everything to us and our response in love is to give him everything in return. She recognized this in that moment. And in the same way, we should recognize God is calling us to give. To give him our heart. To give him our trust. To give him our faith. 
Don't put your faith in what you have. Put your faith in who he is. In this moment, you may feel like this immoral woman. Your heart is still in your hands. Your life is still being kept by you. And today could be the day where you, where, where you release once and for all this, this fear and this anxiety of letting God have all of you. Today's the day. Right now is that moment. It's time for a breakthrough. A breakthrough in your life and in your family. I want you to bow your heads for a moment. Bow your heads with no one else leaving. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and think. Who owns your heart? Who has all of you? There's no neutral ground. There's no middle place. We can't play both sides. It, who owns your heart? You may feel like, I don't know if God owns my heart. We've all sinned. We all need a savior. We all need God. The Bible says the wages or the price for our sin is death. That means that we inherit death. When we decide to keep our sin, to keep our life to ourselves. But Jesus, because he loves us so much, was willing to die on the cross on our behalf. We deserve that punishment. We deserve that death. But Jesus willingly stepped in our place and paid the price for you. He made a way so that now you do not need to try and make your own way. You don't need to try and be perfect. All you need to do is surrender your life. Put your faith in Jesus like this woman. Give him your everything. Give him your heart. Give him what little you feel like you have and trust him with all you got. As you do, he will give you everything he has. He'll give you eternal life, forgiveness of your sins, a new beginning, and a brand new start. This woman was forgiven of all of her sins. Today, don't hold on to any of that anymore. Don't hold on to your sin and your old lifestyle. Give it up to God and let him give you a brand new start. In this moment, if you feel like that's you, I need a new start. I need to give God my heart. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. Don't keep it down, but raise your hand. One, two, three. You're saying, that's me. That's me. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see that hand. Anybody else? Raise your hand. You're saying, that's me. I see your hands. I see your hand over there. I see your hands in the back. I see those hands in the back. I see these hands over here. Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. I need to give God my whole heart. I see your hands over here. Anybody? I see your hand back there. Anybody else? You're saying, that's me. I need to give God my everything. I need to give God my everything. I'm going to ask you guys to do one more thing. Let's all stand to our feet in this moment. For everybody that raised their hand, there's, you're not alone. If you raise your hand today, will you do me the honor of letting us pray for you? Is that okay if we can pray with you? Can we pray for you? If you raise your hand in this moment, I want you to make your way out of your seat and come forward. We're going to stand in the gap with you. We're going to congratulate you. We're going to applaud you. Today is a day for breakthrough and a new start in your life. Let God have everything. Come on, I know there were more hands out there. If you raise your hand today, come forward. We want to pray with you. We want to congratulate you. And please, no one else leaving in this moment. We want to congratulate everybody that raised their hand today. Come on, you're saying that's me. I need to give God my heart. I need to give God my everything. Come forward, come forward. Come forward right now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come forward, come forward. You're saying that's me, that's me, that's me. I need to give God my everything. Come on, church, let's clap for all those that are making the way forward today. God's doing a new thing in their heart. Thank you, Lord. They're still coming up. They're still coming up, church. Let's give them a hand, church. Let's give them a hand, church. For all those that came forward, I just want to say we're proud of you. We really are. We're proud of you, man. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning for you guys.
what God's going to begin to do in your life is something new and something fresh. What we want to do, we want to help you. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you. But we're also going to help you get signed up for something, a class called Holy Warriors. And we're also going to help you get baptized. We have a big mass baptism coming up pretty soon. In, in, in less than two weeks, in about 10 days, we want you to get baptized. Let's, let's give everything to God. Before we go into this new year, let's start this new year off right. And let's give everything to God. They're going to help you get signed up for baptism. But not only that, we're going to help you get signed up for a class called Holy Warriors. In this class, we're going to teach you how to walk with God. We're going to teach you how to be a, a radical disciple of Jesus. We're going to follow him, learn his word, and learn how to, uh, learn how to live a Christian life sold out for God. They're going to help you get signed up. We're going to pray with you. We're going to help you get signed up. So before you leave today, make sure you get signed up for those things. We're going to help you out. Are we excited for them, church? This is what it's all about right here. We're excited for you. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me and say this out loud, but mean it from your heart. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me enough that you died on the cross and you rose from the dead so I could be saved. I put my faith in you. I, I trust you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and I give you everything. I'm not turning back. My life is yours. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new creation. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same again. I sow my life in your hands. Do with it as you please. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise? Altar workers, you can begin praying. Church, we love you. Don't forget, you can register. Find three children in your neighborhood, in your family, to register to receive a gift for our big Christmas giveaway. You can just go to our church app, and you can register them right from the app. And so we can reserve gifts. We have a limited amount of gifts, so we want to make sure we get kids registered as soon as possible. We love you, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Remember, if God is for you, there is no one who can come against you. If you need any prayer, come on up. I'd love to pray with you. If it's your first time and you want to get connected, I'd love to meet you as well. Come on up here. I'll be, I'll be up here for, uh, for a few moments hanging out.